Hello YouTube, and welcome back to my Voxel Devlog series, where I talk about how I'm designing, coding, and building a Voxel engine of massive scale. So much has happened in the past month, and I'm incredibly excited to showcase all of the progress I've made. I've added snow, importing models, and more. So the goal of today's devlog is going to be to sort of give you guys an idea of what the development process is like for my engine, and I'll be doing that by going over how I added snow to the game. And then I'll be doing a sort of whirlwind tour of sorts of the many other features that I've added to my engine. Before we jump into it, I want to announce that there's going to be a new demo posted on my GitHub when I post this video, so please check out the link in the description. You can play the latest version of my demo on either the web or, if you're running Windows, on native. There will be a native variant as well for maximum performance. Now, let's dive right into things. So the first thing I did since I last posted was add snow to the voxel game. I thought that this would be a seasonally appropriate and quick task to do that would also demonstrate the modularity of my engine. Adding snow has sort of been one of my dreams since I actually started this project. I know some other voxel YouTubers have done the same thing, but actually when I started working on voxels over a year ago, one of the things I wanted was a little snowy forest scene with a campfire. And well, we're still missing the campfire, we don't have that yet, but we're getting a lot closer. So. My goal with the snow was to have it fall from the sky and then collect on the ground. As you can see over time, more snow sort of piles up on the ground. And I decided to accomplish this in two parts. I separated the work of rendering the snow to the client, and I separated the work of actually generating the snow to the server. So the snow you see on screen that's just falling down, the server knows nothing about. That snow that you see on screen is just a purely visual effect. And the placement of the snow that's appearing on the ground here is purely server side. The client doesn't know how it's being done. And this separation of responsibilities is a very useful thing for performance because it means I don't have to simulate all of that snow falling in the air on the server side. And on the client side, I don't need to worry about while synchronizing where the snow is every frame and trying to send that data over the network. It's a lot simpler this way and achieves the same effect. So to begin development, I started with the client side system of just drawing snow on screen. I sat down at an airport because I was traveling to visit some family over break and I created a new file and a new geese system. Geese being the event system library that I use, that I've written, to organize my code for my voxel engine. You can see here how the system is sort of set up. This particular system, which I call the snow renderer, responds to two events from the engine. There's the onconfigure graphics event, which is called before graphics rendering begins. And then there's the on render event where the snow actually paints itself to the screen. The way I set it up uh, during the onconfigure event the snow is actually spawned on the CPU side. So the CPU goes through and it decides essentially, okay, there should be a voxel snowflake falling from the sky at this position here. And it does a ray cast to make sure that the snow only falls to the ground, never through the ground. So you don't see snow falling through trees and into caves and whatnot. But then once the CPU spawns those particles, they're actually sent to the GPU and every frame during the on render event, the GPU draws all of the snow to the screen. And the GPU also calculates the position of the snow for each frame. This is very performant because the CPU doesn't need to worry about updating the position of the snow every frame because there are around 6,000 snowflakes on screen. The CPU simply needs to spawn the snowflakes and then the GPU in parallel determines where the snow should go. So there's a lot less of a load on the CPU, which is great for frame rates. I also, client side, added some fog, which definitely makes it feel like there's a snowstorm going on. And with that, it was very simple to just register this snow renderer system with the rest of my engine, add it to the graphics pipeline, and voila! I had working, falling snow. But that was only half the battle. 
because I wanted the snow to collect on the ground. Next up, then, was the server side work. And again, you can guess what I did. I created a new geese event system, and this one I called Snow Generator. It would run on the server side and be responsible for actually placing in the snow at various positions on the ground. This system, as you can see, responds to a single event, the server side tick event, and the tick event is called currently around 40 times per second. It signifies the beginning of the main game loop, which is utilized to update all entities and perform what will be physics in the future. I don't have that yet. And during the tick event, this snow generator places some snow in the world. Those snow particles are then automatically synced to the client using a different system that I set up a few episodes ago for networking. Originally, this system was pretty naive and it would just pick a random position and place a snowflake at that position. But that ended up being a little bit laggy because my engine is designed for more infrequent but larger voxel updates rather than many small, random, and fre very frequent voxel updates, which you would typically have with snow falling on the ground. So to solve this problem, what I did was I actually batched the snow placement. So the snow generation system now waits until it has 20 or 30 pieces of snow to place, and then it spawns them all at once, essentially transforming a bunch of small updates into one big one, which is my engine is much, much better at dealing with. And as you can see with both of the systems enabled, we have a nice lovely little snowstorm with actual interactive snow that will slowly fill up the ground over time. I've designed it so that in a few hours, you should have an entire layer of snow covering everything in the world. Of course, that's up to some degree of randomness. The Voxel Snow was one of many updates and improvements that I made to my Voxel engine this month. Another very cool feature that I think many of you will enjoy is the model importer that I added to my engine. Now we have a title screen and there's a drop down menu where you can actually select a custom file to import. You can also select a scale to match the scale to that of my engine since my engine's voxels are a lot smaller than what you would see in a game like Minecraft. And using this model importer, I've actually made some of the scenes that you see on screen now. So for example, this is an Ace of Spades map. Ace of Spades is a game much like Minecraft, and I've imported it at a 16x scale. So we've got blocks here, but they're not truly blocks because I can break them down and edit them individually, edit every single voxel individually, which is just so awesome. I think importing custom models really demonstrates the scale of what my engine can achieve. But I can't actually take much credit for this model importer because I didn't write the code for it. I'm using the library for importing the voxel models called Gvox, which was written by another voxel YouTuber, Gabe Brundlett. Gvox is a C++ library, and I was lurking in Gabe's Discord about, uh, let's see, three weeks or three or four weeks back, and I saw that he had been working on this. And what's more, I saw that there were Rust bindings for it. And I said, okay, my project is in Rust, how do I get on this train? Unfortunately, it wasn't very simple to import Gvox into my project because my voxel game needs to run on the web. And to be frank, running C++ and Rust code together on the web with the C++ standard library is not something that I know of ever having been done before. So I sat down with Gabe, I told him, I want this to work on the web. And he was nice enough to work with me. We sat in a Discord call and try to get this project, try to get his library compiling with my engine. We literally spent 20 hours on this. It was a nightmare that I was planning to sort of tell, tell you guys about as a story, but I think it would just be too technical and boring. Long story short, we encountered every kind of issue under the sun. We hit two internal compiler errors where the compiler itself crashes. I mean, I've only ever seen like five internal compiler errors my entire life, and two of them were on this. So it was a real challenge getting Gvox imported into my engine. Um, I basically gave up at one point 
And then a week later, Gabe and I picked it up again, and it turned out that we had only been about 100 lines of code away from a working example. Working together, Gabe and I managed to actually get his project up and running in a web browser, which was super cool. So definitely, if you haven't checked out Gabe's channel already, do that. He has a very different focus than me. He likes to try and do everything on the GPU, which leads to some very interesting innovations. And I highly recommend watching his Voxel videos. They're, they're really different than mine, and that's a good thing. It's cool to see what he's up to. So if you want to play around with the model importer, I highly recommend going and downloading some Ace of Spades maps and heading on over to the online demo and importing them in. I recommend using a scale of 16 times, which sort of matches the scale that I'm going for for my engine. If you use a scale of 16 times, your player movement speed should be the same as the Minecraft walking speed, which should give you an idea of how big I want the world to be. Of course, while I think the model importation and the snow were the coolest features that I added, there were many other things that I did. I now have cascaded shadow maps. So now a high resolution shadow map is utilized when you're close to objects. So you have precise, nice looking shadows. Farther away, there's a coarser shadow map that takes less time and memory to compute, but is not as finely detailed. And this allows objects to have shadows even when they're very far away. I also added more settings and an actual settings menu, better controls, and lots of bug fixes. I truly think that this is the best version of my voxel engine yet. There are so many more features that I want to add, like physics, and that's actually what I'll be working on in the next episode. I know, I know, I've been saying for a couple episodes now that physics would be next. But now it finally is, I promise. I've recently taken to using a Kanban board to organize my work, and you can see here are all of the things that I've gotten done over the past two weeks. Now I'm working on my video, and up next are all physics-related tasks. I've already started thinking about and prototyping some of the algorithms that I will be using for my physics processes. Thank you all very much for watching and for the continued support. We've hit 3,000 subscribers, which is absolutely awesome. If you have any comments or questions, please do leave them down below. I always welcome feedback and I'm more than happy to talk technical details about the project. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.